that we're we're in progress. Oh, well, okay. All right. John is our John Johnson is our secretary, so we'll just have to. Can he? Well, he'll be able to fill this. So, mm -hmm. according to my phone, it is five thirty-two. Following this meeting to order. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen the draft minutes from our last minute from our last meeting. Have you no, seen them? Yeah. You seen them? Yeah, I saw them. You seen them? Here, yeah, you can see them right now. <laughs> um, our March seventh meeting. I have not seen minutes to that, so uh, I think we need to move to. I guess I'll make a motion to table the approval of those minutes to our next meeting. Is all in favor? Aye. Okay. Rufus, hey, how are you today? Of course. Did you see the minute minutes from the last one? Just trying to make notes for, for John here. Once Rufus gets a look at that as well. So Lucas, just so you know, we've we just approved the approval of the March 7th meeting minutes to the next meeting because no one is six. All right, so um, anyone want to make a motion to approve the paper August 12th minutes? Motion to approve August 12th minutes. For the second. All in favor? Aye. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay, so that's all of us. So um obviously the purpose for this meeting is our continued concerns with, with the construction of our sidewalks to date. Um, it's been pointed out to us, it's been pointed out to the selectmen, and it's been pointed out to probably anyone who asks that we do not believe that we're getting what we're paying for. I do not believe it's being compacted properly to this date. I watched them pour concrete on Tuesday, no, Wednesday morning. I watched them walk on concrete Un, obviously uncompacted soil and sinking into it about a half inch before they poured the concrete. I brought that to Mike Thorey's attention and Mike disagreed with me when I was completely across the street. I saw them throw the soil in the area. I saw them walk on it. I saw them from that distance sink into it about a half an inch. I saw them take the jackrabbit compactor away before they poured, and then I saw them pour concrete up. Mike's response to me when I told him that if that was compacted, I'm George Washington, um, was that the concrete would sell it. And to me, that is the worst answer you could give a concrete person. <laughs> so, there we stand. Um, we already know that or we have mentioned that we think that the granite is an inferior product. Um, we have shown diagrams. We have Justin Money had done a nice little presentation describing our issues with the fact that it is concave and convex on the side that we're pouring concrete, whereas it should be a, a 
a straight edge vertically so that when the frost comes along that the concrete could and granite could move independently. Um, there is in effect a, a uh, supposed to be a buffer for, to eliminate the bonding of the two, the concrete and the granite. They place a piece of six mil poly between it, which does eliminate the bonding, but it doesn't eliminate the fact that the concrete is both inward of the top of the granite and outward of the top of the granite. Thus the bonding, the actual bonding doesn't matter. It's the fact that they're uneven and it's not a vertical cut that will, will not allow them to move independently. So we're here to discuss more about that and see what we can do about what's done and what we can hopefully do in the future. I got a question, Gene. You, you sent that addendum too, and it had a drawing with it. Is that the correct drawing? It seems to be the same as the one was in the spec. Sorry, say that again. That addendum too that you sent out by email this afternoon had the uh, drawing entitled, I think it's called Sheet of Work. It was on that sheet floor, floor it calls for a clean back, five inch depth. That's what Mike's talking about. So that was the addendum two. Maybe there's a, it, it must be an addendum one also. The paperwork I got didn't really say whether. Pardon me? Was the dial down the one there? The green? This? No. This first part. This one? No, the short. This. Describing the green. Yeah. That was. I don't know. It all long, came. It? it came in the emails. That, this was the whole email. So we had it too. So I was just wondering. This. Which point was that, Jeff? I don't see it. Pardon me? I have one that's more. Oh, okay. The plan that was here on the table. Gene, did you put the paper? Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's dated June 25th, 2021. It's a curving sawn back five inches, at least five inches, where the concrete meets the curve. Was there an addendum after June, 20, June 25th, 2021? I think there was. I think there was. Yeah, I'm not aware of it, nor have I seen it. <laughs> yeah, there's another uh, drawing. I couldn't print the whole thing, but somebody put hatch lines around a couple of the details on there, the curve details. Also, on this plan dated 25th of June. It shows the curbing being 18 inches tall, so I'm assuming there's an addendum accepting the lesser. That's the change order one. That's in the um, email that I sent. Who, who accepted three? that? The town. The three selectmen? Yes. Because Rufus, when I asked him, he had no recollection of that. Yeah, we discussed it at, I'd have to go back and look at the meeting, but that was when. Mather came back to us and said we can't source the granite in the the normal source and normal vendors that they use, and so they're going to have to go to North Carolina. And uh, wouldn't so that be their problem? I mean, I've I've been a lot of jobs. When I come back and tell them something like that, they laugh at me and said, uh, "You know, you gave you gave us the price. You, you know, it's your problem. Eat it." So did the addendum specify the 15 inch instead of 18 inch? Um, I'm not gonna buy it to go back and look at it. And did the addendum 
allow for the improper edge on this concrete side. I wasn't really prepared for all these questions you guys were going to ask. These were, I mean, these were all items that we brought up at the selections meeting. Right now. I thought it had been discussed. Yeah, but we didn't. We never discussed in that deep kind of detail. No. I including the two inch east edge radius. Okay, so um, I guess so after those three questions, my next question is, why wasn't our committee notified so we could recommend what we thought to you as being the experienced people on board to make those recommendations? I don't really have an answer. Things were moving. We were trying to get the project started. I, I understand, and we would love to. You know, we were just as anxious to get the project started, but our issue all along has been to do this properly. Mm -hmm. And to us, at least Jack and I, this this granite looks to be more reject granite that they wanted to get rid of. <laughs> I mean. I, I, I hate to say it that way, but is it, okay, my next question, is there a minimum thickness of the granite? Because some of it is at best four inches or three and three quarter inches thick where it is concave. I know that they've been inspecting all of the granite. So have we, so have we. We've measured it, we have pictures of it. Measured. And where it is concave, it is not five inches thick. Some, some of the pieces maybe should have been rejected. I called to talk to uh, Swenson today. They're the Connecticut people, and they have, I think they have, they have something in Massachusetts, maybe New Hampshire. And they, although the guy wasn't intimately familiar with this project, he said that all Connecticut projects were coming out of South Carolina now, and that they actually own the plant down there. And I asked him about the saw and back, and he, he he said it would add an awful lot of money to the project to do that. And if you wanted that, you'd uh, right now if you place an order for granite, you wait over a year. So and it was the same condition when this was bid. But I don't. What I don't understand is, you know, Mather bid the thing. They should have known what they were getting into when they bid it. You now the fact that they had problems getting it after the fact. It was really there for Hi, John. Well, I touched back of what I could as far as a few minutes ago. The rest of the discussion, I think, is yet quite obvious. I was told. So, if you could please move over. Oh, yeah. Just bring it over to the middle. Yeah, that was good. Right. Right. We've already um, tabled the minutes from our March 7th minute meeting, but we don't have those. We've accepted the minutes from the April 12th. So, Jack, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But anyway, I was saying, I, I spoke to Swenson, and we talked about this job. He wasn't you know, intimately familiar with it, but he did say that all of the granite for Connecticut was not in South Carolina. There were, there were so many back orders that they couldn't fill in water. They're taking orders for 2023 now. It's, it's been like that all year. That's probably why he ended up in South Carolina. And he said the standard installation is on, on uh, process. And I asked him about the sawn back. He said it was cost prohibitive. And wasn't necessarily necessary. He said they do this up in New Hampshire and Maine this way, which you know could be the case. But we're still faced with the fact that the material underneath that granite is not properly compacted. They're cutting the edges about 45 where they butt together, putting a blob of concrete. It's probably going to tie the two pieces together, and it maybe has a, a bigger base, and that adds, adds a little more stability. But we still have. Eight to ten feet of granite curve is unsupported, sitting on these pedestals. 
And it may look good today, it may look good tomorrow, it might be good 10 years from now. But according to some of the people I've talked to, that they're gonna, it's gonna end up splitting, some of them are gonna settle. And there's really no reason why they can't get it properly compacted, just like it calls for in the plan. Despite what Darren says, I've seen it, Mike's seen it, you were there the other night. I walked up without doing anything, I put my entire hand, my fingers underneath the curb. And that's supposed to be you know, at 95% compaction. And there's a, an airspace, a gap. These guys are flying right along, banging this thing out. Maybe somebody needs to crack the whip and slow them down a little bit and pay a little more attention to the, doing what's, what's in these specifications. And that's, that's what, we, what we're paying for. And as far as that detail goes, I, I called uh, DOT, talked to this Rob Fernandez, or something, he sent an email. He said, what we're doing and what they have on the plan is the standard detail for the install of curves on, on the process. It's still, it doesn't take them off the hook for doing the proper compaction. So then I called and I talked to Appalucci. They do a lot of this work more than Mather does. And they said that they agreed that that is the standard detail. However, if the town has a streetscape uh, specification of their own, DOT will back right off and go, let you do what's in the specification as long as it's not nice. It's a crazy thing. So. In the state right away? In the state right away. So for the future, uh, I don't know if we have any more state right away work to do, but you know, uh, the other two legs of this project, we could have the concrete cradle underneath. That would eliminate all of this business of wondering whether or not it's properly compacted. Like phase two, would we might be able to I think that if we recommend that the town um, puts it in their streetscape spec, and maybe in phase two, it could happen there. Phase two would be. Who did you speak with? I forget how to pronounce their name. I A P P L U C C I O. Appalachian. Who did you speak with there? Chris Negro. I'm thinking maybe this committee might be able to recommend that the town adapt that as part of their streetscape. Yeah, Brook, Brookfield has <clears throat> such a specification, so maybe we'll just go down and get a copy of it. We could take a look at that and if we want to make that recommendation, we can probably just alter their document instead of paying somebody else to do the whole thing over again. You want to make a motion for that, Jeff? Or? Sure. I'll make a motion that we take a look at a specification for the people of the streetscape specification address the installation of the curbs using the concrete cradle. One second. Well, I'll second. Can I? Sure, we can second. I'll second it. One favor. Um, that's to. Oh, no, sorry. To draft it or or to recommend it to the town. Recommend draft. that we look into a streetscape specification. Oh, could possibly be the draft. town the town specs. Could possibly draft. That. Yeah. Any discussion? Any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so the big question now is what do we do to make ourselves happy with what's going on now? Um, I understand that Swenson Spencer? Swenson. Swenson said that it would be would not be cost effective to to do that soft cut on the back side. But I'm looking at the plan. I'm looking at the, the detail. I don't see where anyone, any addendum, I do not see an addendum from anybody. I have not heard of an addendum. I think that it's this falls on matter court. Oh, it was a change. I'm, I'm sorry? For which are you talking about? 
the five inch cut on the on the curbing that where the concrete is poured against it. Do you address that with the change order, Eugene? Yeah, well, we I haven't seen it. And again, it wasn't brought to our attention. Um, so with the change order, Mather was allowed to not include that after they bid it or before they bid. Change yeah, orders come after. I was not ready for all these questions. I, was. I sent out all of the I'm, documents I'm, to everybody this okay. afternoon. I've been, I've had a couple of other buyers during the day. It was not okay. So let's let, let's make a list of requests again, and maybe our next meeting we can have this information. Because I thought that this that all of this was brought to the collective attention of the meeting the other night. That's why we had this meeting because I thought we would have that information. Number one, I would like to see the the addendum one and two, if there are two. Number two, I would like to see if in the contract, Mather was allowed to change that after, and did they change their price accordingly? My understanding is that this granite that they have purchased was $67,000, I think is what you said, higher than what, they, what was supposed to be in the plans. So if that saw cut was so expensive, why is this material, which is far in my mind, I can't, in my mind and others, other people's mind, far inferior to what it shows on the plan, why is it $67,000 more? So the bigger question is, who's responsible for it not matching? Is it the Board of Selectmen? Is it Mather? Is it SLR? Not matching the joints or the specs? That it doesn't match the specs. Well, we don't know that yet. So I know, that's that. what I'm, I'm, I'm addressing questions that hopefully we will have answers and have another meeting to discuss it. Actually, this, those, is, if this is the Connecticut DOT standard. Right. It yeah. shows a sawn top. Yes. Yeah, we have a sawn. But it shows five inches and no place in the drawing. Is it less than five? It may be rough. Okay. Speaking of sawn top, on the plan dated June 25th, 2021, it says thermal finish. Which Justin Money was kind enough to address when he did his presentation, saying that the thermal finish is a much safer top surface for that because it, it, it has a roughness to it. And remember, he showed we showed you how smooth that saw cut is versus a, a thermal thermal finish, which has more traction. So yet they again, say it could be done. It could be done easier. Yeah. You just take the port the torch deployment. It's not a difficult thing. But again, is Matter Corporation re relieved from that responsibility too? I mean, it seems that there are a lot of things as far as this detail that we're not getting. And did we get a discount? It sounds like we paid more for less. I don't see how that's at all acceptable. They awesome. did it. They did it in March of this year, which most items were pretty darn close to their highest level of pricing, as far as I know. And most of my materials were until the fuel went up, but then that's just trucking. So as far as the concrete and granite that is in place, I would like to make a, a recommendation at the cost of Mather Corporation that they saw cut that five inches along the curbing and fill it with a self-leveling cost. 
um, with a dado blade, so it's not just a little eighth inch cut. It should be at least a quarter inch. And if they saw cut it, I think that would eliminate some of the less than desirable looks of the product because they can take out some of the some of the curving is three quarters of an inch different at the top. We showed you that too, Lucas. If they if they would do this saw cut, I think that would eliminate the the, the concern for the vertical lift and shifting. I think it would make it a, a lot more aesthetically pleasing, which <clears throat> obviously was the main factor in the decision here. And at least I would feel better about the shifting when it shifts. What kind of caulk would you say? Well, they have a self-leveling caulk that they they actually have to use on the um, construction joints of the sidewalk. They have expansion joint. I don't know how many feet apart they have it, but they have expansion joint and there's a cap that they pour on top of it. They just peel that cap off and they and they put this self level caulk on top of that. It's a very elastic, yeah, I very see. sticky, and there's such sticks to it. And it, it, it fluctuates, it's very movable. So, are you suggesting on the curbing that is indented that that gets filled before the before the curb? Well, no, no, you can't. What's done is done. Right, but. And my, we still have that concern about the concrete being underneath the top of the granite and you know, the granite floating into the concrete where it's convex and concave where the concrete is into underneath. I think if we can, at Mather's expense, I hope, um, if we could have them cut it with a wide blade and then caulk it and allow it to. Um, any questions concerning that? I think we have to wait to look at the uh, change order while we get any further into this, see what they're actually. What's that? Let's see what they're actually responsible for. Big thing right now is to put an end to this lack of compaction underneath. I agree with everything. And that needs to happen right away because these guys are. Putting in 100 or 200 feet of curve a day, it just keeps going on and on. Every time we have a yeah. meeting and we wait another five days, it's a couple hundred feet that's floating around. Yep, and our hired engineer was standing there with Mike Doherty the other day watching the pour on. From 45, I don't know, how far is it from across 341 from the curb, you know, from the curb sidewalk going up towards the school? I was standing on the other end of the crosswalk. And you could see that it wasn't compacted from that far away when they walked on it and sunk into it. But they got an inspector out there that wasn't even aware of the uh, straight sections that were in the radius. That was brought brought to Mike Doherty's attention by Mike. Yeah. Now his own engineer just there all day long inspecting it. That that should have stuck out like a sore thumb. Mike shouldn't have to bring that to his attention. So I don't think they're. <clears throat> I mean, I don't want to say it, but uh, somebody needs a boot here to get them. Well, personally, I, I think it's a conflict of interest. I, I know it was tough to find somebody. Um, it's the engineering is coming from within the design company. Um, uh, to me, it's it's obvious that what we're trying to address is really being ignored right in front of my face and right to my face. And I think, you know, that with this, what I believe is a conflict of interest, I think that the best interest of the townspeople is to find somebody else that will be there and that will force them to compact when it needs. Everything that they pour should be on compacted soil. You shouldn't be able to kick it. And we shouldn't be, especially that, that um, that trap rock item four process from from O and G, I, when that stuff's compacted, you can't kick you can't kick a quarter inch of that. When we were just Rufus, 
I, when I was kicking into it, I got down into there three inches without even trying. Part of the problem is a lack of lack of moisture. It says right in the spec, I think. but it calls out the uh, <clears throat> optimal moisture somewhere in different compaction. And this is what it's, it's like the Sahara Desert out there. We haven't had any substantial rain all the time. Yeah, but compactability relies extremely on moisture being there. And it's just not getting. I think Mike Doherty says that they're doing their compression testing and all that, but I don't see it. I don't see it being compacted. Not at the top, at least. Maybe, maybe I don't know how deep they're going. I don't know how many tests they're doing. I don't know where exactly they should testing. have a report. We should request a report. Yeah. report. Question, Matt? Yes. Um, is the is the sidewalk side of the work um, considered part of the the DOT? Work or is it just the roadway? So it's all our work, it's all DOT property. Yeah, I'm and just we are responsible for it. Um, it's all DOT. That, that's the, 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 at some point, is the DOT going to be looking for inspection reports? And are we are, are you getting any inspection reports? I haven't seen one because the inspection report would say it would, it would answer that question readily, right? Because then they would they would have the moisture content and. You can measure compaction without the moisture. Right? So and, it should, and it should be all marked out where they've done that. On, on the plan, that the, this yeah. section this section was compacted, this section was measured for compaction, the soil measured this this much moisture, and, and then everybody could, you could dispel it. Jack is right that there's, and I don't mean to say that they are not, but if there's space underneath that curve, then somebody is not inspecting properly. And I think that that's, that's what we're here for. So I think that you have to. I, I, I think that this commission, this committee has the almost obligation to tell everybody to stop working until you resolve it. We don't have the legal authority to tell them. We can recommend it to the selectors, but we don't have the legal authority to stop it. We believe, in fact, we, I mentioned at our last meeting that I wanted it stopped and I wanted half of that granite redone. But they just, the next day, they were for or against it. It, and then we couldn't pretty, have our meeting last Thursday. It was postponed to Monday. It only seems with the to me that, that with, with the, ins the inspection reports would, would answer all most of the questions that you have. I I agree. Maybe we can even if they even if they do a nuclear density test, they might have ninety five percent compaction, but then you still got an air gap between the top of the where the test was taken, the bottom of the curve. And I, yeah, it's the inspector is not. Making them do it the way they should be. And that's Matt, a I have dozens yeah. of pictures showing where they lift them, put stuff under them, they tamp it down on the floor by floor. Thanks. That's not the answer to the question. And, you know, so no matter what they say, we've seen it. We've seen them pour against it, and nothing's being done. It's been brought to Mike Dory's attention. That's been brought to the attention of the board of selectmen, and it's it, moving forward. It seems like it, it, and I'm not saying it definitely is, but it appears to me like we're just trying to get it done. Can we talk to these uh, guys, Gene, or the engineer? It's a committee yes. member. The inspector, the, the, uh, the contractor, yeah, the guy who lost in the Um, right. Yeah, has he? Uh, I'm not sure how to answer that question. I, well, I maybe mean, we go out there and say, you know, we don't think you're doing this proper. Why is there a gap under there? Are we out of line? Um, I really the point of contact into the project is my story, but. Um, Mike Doherty told me the other day that that he cannot go on with me sitting standing there complaining about it being improperly done. Well, Mike answered all the questions that were asked. That day, time. that day, it was not <laughs> compacted. I I took a picture from a distance because when they're working, I'm not allowed to be close to the site. So I had to take my picture from a distance. It was not compacted. 
And I'm pretty darn sure I know what compacted soil is. And his answer was that the concrete was set up. Well, maybe we have to do is draft a letter and let's town agrees with it, send it to, uh, what is it, SLR? I don't know, we're got some concerns. And a number of people have raised these concerns. And, uh, what are you going to do about it? Maybe there's somebody else in that company that is more concerned about it than Mike is. So when, when we hired the inspector, Was there anything in there that said they've got to submit reports on a I don't know. Particular mm -hmm. interval or I haven't seen that contract basis? I haven't seen that contract either. I don't think there uh, one, one would assume I remember if it said whether it was weekly or monthly or one would assume that he would supply some sort of reports, but do they go to Mike Doherty or do they go to the board of select or both? I don't know what's in the contract. We've seen very little. Rick, you haven't said much about this. I know you've been able to see more than most of us. I get the same answer when they first started. I told them I wanted to make sure that they were doing the compaction test on it. I was. Didn't think there was enough process there either. And I asked him if he was accepting the process that was under there to begin with. If they tested that, to accept that as part of it. They said they did, uh, they were going to do the little clear tests on that. They did take samples of the original stuff. I never didn't see the of the existing material, meaning the, the yeah, actual the process that was under there oh. already. Because they they took samples of it to get a proctor on it. SLR did, or rather, uh, I think SLR Mather took the sample. Mather? Did they have to give the samples to the state to be tested too, or you don't know? Uh, or they had to test it. Okay. But whether SLR and you would know it. Where's the, uh, where's the state inspector with all this? He's been out there <laughs> like almost every day, which is yeah. really surprising. Yeah. The MD and <laughs> I just saw him. I don't know. What's his name? Andy? Yeah. What's his last name? Modine, I believe. D E E N. He took Terry Phelan's place. Well, I just want to make it clear that we're not here to try and delay this thing. We're just here to try and see that it's done. To what we know is is proper. And what's happening with the rounded edge that was supposed to be ordered in front of the Catholic Church? That was part of the, the mounting. Yeah, that was I, eliminated long back. I think it's just on the, still on the north side of Bridge Street. Isn't it? No. That was eliminated because I know we talked about it, talked about it, talked about it. Uh, thought that was across the I street. Thought, but it is, I can't. It is the north side. Because everyone parked. It wasn't in the bid as that one. Right. Not as well curb. There's nothing on that sheet there. Right? Yeah, so curb. Two inch eased edge radius. Yeah. That's right here. Well, I don't think it was um, in the contract. I don't think there's a bid there. Before. Again, that's on the, the plan that dated June 25th, 2021. Two inch eased edge radius. Because that's going to be a disaster. See with no wonder when all radius curving less than 15 feet, feet radius shall be ground to achieve the two inch radius on the street side of the curve and feathered into adjacent straight pitch. So I guess it's the curve. That's the, the curve sec the curve or the grant that doesn't exist. The curve grant that doesn't exist. Right. <laughs> Mike Doherty did say at our last meeting he would make them change that. I would hope that before the next payment is given to Mather, that that is fixed. Just my hopes. Because you saw it. That was uh, by morning. Down by morning. So, yeah. And also, I didn't get close enough on the other, on the other corner across the street. 
I don't think they I don't think there's curved granite there either, but I couldn't get close enough. Because they had the mixer there and they, they had you know it was shut shut down for anyone who was getting here. So I haven't been down there to see it since Wednesday morning. And also between morning start and Kent School, were they going by the center line with the line of the granite? The I have no planet? idea what they were going by. <laughs> it's <laughs> That's not straight, that's for sure. It's got a hell of a kink in it. Yeah. Um, and that would be a nightmare for a guy plowing snow when they all of a sudden start throwing in. Yeah, it's going to be bouncing off or it's going to be leaving a lot of snow there. It's going to back up water. Right. So um, back to the aesthetics. Does anyone know why they have it so crooked going down through there? I wasn't. I think they're going off the previous. I don't remember there being a kink in it, but. It was hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> you notice it now. Now it's noticeable. <laughs> I mean, it's, it really is. Yeah. I mean, the surveyor had a <clears throat> point every so many feet down there, and I think yeah. he was measuring off the, the pre existing curve. They didn't have, I don't think there's any plan on it first. Okay. So, yeah, we had that, that smaller, <clears throat> earlier set of plans. My action might be the biggest. We just got that whole nice little pack. Yeah, I think they're here. That we looked yesterday. It appeared to be wandering like that. That section that we were just talking about. Yeah, but not as I'm talking about in the plan. Oh, no, right. Oh. Okay, so this one is one of these, I think. Yeah, well, one of those, these are existing and the PL or the plan. So here's Elizabeth Street, so. So that's more, so this is the bridge down there. Edge of bridge looks pretty straight to me. This is the sidewalk. Yeah. There's no. Well, again, is, is that correct? Is that the survey or is that the cake that's in there is, <laughs> is obvious? It's not where. Yeah. And when you look down the yellow line, you look down the white line, there's no kink in either of those. At least not even close to what the sidewalk shows. Scale off from the center line to the all the way down through see the very I mean it's wider down it looks there. Like the shore, right? It's pretty oh. narrow right here and back out. Well, they narrowed it up immediately quickly from the bridge. The bridge is a lot wide. The bridge is like six or seven feet, six feet wide, easy. And they narrowed the new one up quickly, which kind of takes in from the bridge, if I recall. Yeah. Instead of just following that line. And... Oh. What's the day when those plants are going to break? This plant? This yeah. is well, the one Jack has is an older plant. This one's dated. Why 1720? But that should be the. If you have. Okay. Uh, what is it? Sheet one. 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 So this is it. No, 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 no
Well, up row is where the yeah. 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 right. up there. Seven north. Seven south. Here's the beginning of Red Street. Elizabeth Street, Elizabeth Street. There it is here. There's the bridge. There's Morning Star. I don't see a single. So it varies quite a bit off that center line. If you... Yeah, but I don't see it. Right here. Yep, there's a curve in it right there. Yeah, that's only so like this, but they've got a. The sidewalk yeah. is straight, though. Just about. This one's straight. Yes, straight. But this so, thing, what they did, comes down. Yeah, yeah. put this one. Yeah. Leave yeah. this one on the edge. Let's see it right here. But nothing, it doesn't. It yeah, doesn't look like what's down there. What, we, what's down there goes like this and this. We would have thought when they were surveying it, somebody would have said, wait a sec, what are we doing here? Right, and made it straight. <laughs> you know. And that just shows it. Or close to being straight. Anyway. Or at least, like, say, question the reality of. Anyhow, so moving forward, what do we. Jack, your idea was to write a letter, give it to Jane and letter or recommend look at it. She can doctor it up or send it on or whatever, send it to these guys and put them on notice about our concerns. Do we ask them to stop work until I mean, can't be careful we? doing that? Right? Yeah, I know because they. So you would be making recommendations to the board. So, good. So, what do we want to recommend to them? Well, I guess the big issue is the compaction. Those, yeah, the whole list that we've been talking about, those straight sections that were in the radius. Look like the alignment right along 341 before you get to the bridge. And uh, do we recommend they fix it? Do we recommend they tear it out? Do we recommend saw cutting to create that straight edge? Do we? I mean, we, we've got to kind of finite our recommendation here, don't we? Mm -hmm. Well, we're not in the well, position to design anything, so. We should definitely recommend that the uh, inspection reports be submitted to the Slarkman's yeah. office weekly or something. At a time, right? Like, mm -hmm. And on a plan, not just a, you know, that'll show where the tests were done and what areas of the sidewalk. Yeah, we've got money in there to pay for that. So we, we could specify that we want a density test on every 150 feet or whatever prior to placing the curb at a specific, right at the bottom of the curb, not right. two or three inches below. So how often should we ask for these inspection reports? Two weeks, one week? I think it should be weekly right. because they're moving. Right. They're going. Okay. And then young guys should be yeah. writing one daily. I'm sure he sends right. it to the office. Okay. Now, what happens when this inspection report says that it's compacted when we know otherwise? I don't know. <clears throat> so, the when they do the test, is there some sort of uh, read out if or... it's a nuclear test, there should be a state of Connecticut guy should have it. Yeah, a professional engineer is going to sign off on it. Mm -hmm. All the details will be on it. But... <clears throat> well, we, we don't, don't know where it's going to be. How they come about the uh, compaction test or conclusion. So, so, in short, we would like <laughs> to. To recommend that the board of selectmen require to, this is in short, it's not the motion, but would we, that the board of selectmen require.
require the engineer to supply or produce a weekly report of his findings and, and compaction readings and compaction points to both the Board of Selectmen and our committee. Does that kind of shorten it up enough or? Okay, so. That is in the contract. Pardon me? That is in the contract. That is? Okay. It's really, I, I just need to so they've been, they've been moving along pretty well for a couple of weeks. Have you seen any of this? It is, so is the con does the contract say weekly, monthly? It says that they'll that they're to perform field testing and sampling of concrete, and that the concrete cylinders will be sent to an accredited lab for compression analysis. Um, How often? Is, I mean, I, and after continuing yes. reading, okay. state and Connecticut that would like for the trip. Yeah, well, required tests. We don't know how much. You know, we don't know any of. Yes. Do you know this guy, Andy? The... No, not at all. Maybe he's the one a lot of brand new people to yeah, so he, Maybe he's the one to talk to. I think on our side, he, he can go in there and crack the whip. He's going to be there every day. He so, certainly has the authority. So, do we change this what recommendation or do we, do we want to make a motion? I, Why don't we just make well, a general recommendation? We're going to supply a letter with our concerns and yeah. recommendations. And don't worry about the details at the moment because. It's too complicated to iron it all out okay. before dinner. So, <laughs> right, we have that force, if we're selecting Thursday, then it would be um, this coming Thursday. Um, certainly when, helpful. When, so, so then compile. Uh, let's go with Jack's motion. That, can, um, can I volunteer one or two to write the letter for our review? Say on Tuesday before the BOS meeting. Is it against the law for us to write this letter together? Outside of a meeting? Correct. Yes. No, How against the law, it's who, makes, who makes these rules? Like, like because because two people can be assigned to do this, and you're not going to sit in front of everybody to write a letter. I mean, I don't Why don't you? Well, just discuss to, what you want to include in the letter, right. and then you, as the chair. And certainly, it. as yeah, the representative, and that letter. Right. Okay, so included in the letter. Okay, so let's make this motion. Okay, and then we'll decide what to put in it. Um, I'll make the motion that that we, as a committee, submit a letter to the board of selectmen addressing all of our concerns with the project to date and what we see could happen or could be adjusted in the future. Concerns and recommendations. Pardon? Concerns and recommendations. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Do we have a second um, on that? Um, With the intent of getting the best possible job. I'm happy I mean, to second it. The, I just wondering if anyone has anything to add to. No, he's adding with the intent to get the best possible results we can for the project. I mean, it's like if we're stuck with the curbing we got, then at least they should be matching it up at the joints, things but like that's that. Part of the recommendation, I think, was part of the letter. Um, yeah. We did <clears> mention <throat> that. To the board of selectmen the other day because you saw there was three quarters of an inch difference in the cook from one to the next which is i think unacceptable um so let's selection uh regarding our concerns and recommendations for securing the best possible product. That's how's that. Anyone want to second that? Second. All in favor. Any Aye. more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now, as far as that letter goes, um, we want to discuss the everything that's in the detail, basically. The thermal finish, the saw cut, 
the breaker bond, which well, we need, need to get those addendums first. Yeah. Is there, Gene? Is, it should be all right. I only had one, I had addendum two, and there, I didn't see an addendum one. Then I couldn't open, the only thing I opened and got was a, a drawing. And there wasn't a lot of detail. Well, maybe it's in the change order almost. Well, no, I, I'm looking at my emails right now. 625 back to 505, and I do not have it yet. You know, we're, we've been losing time all along. Um, I think I think draft the letter to include all the concerns and if they're void according to the contract, then they're void. Right. But let's get things in there. Right. I'm sorry? But let's get the things in the letter. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, that's why <clears throat> we need the contract. We need the addendums to see. Well, if, if you get them, great. If you don't, draft the letter with yeah. all the concerns. Yeah, right. And the board select them and sort them. Some of the um, construction engineer inspector contract. Okay. Um, so this Thursday is the next meeting. Oh, well. Okay. So say what? It doesn't have any like the reports had to be weekly or anything. It's that they would do the reports. Well, they can't give you the the concrete strength until twenty eight days. Right. So that you know, there, there's no way they can speed that up, and, but they can give you on 28 days for the concrete strength. I don't see why we can't see a weekly report as fast as they're moving. There's a lot going on, yeah. And I think that a weekly report is even slow with as fast as they're moving. And the state of Connecticut only does the testing, so. They could penalize you if the compaction isn't correct and the materials aren't correct. They don't actually make you go back to usually and rip it out. They penalize. Right. Instead of fixing it, they just penalize it. Yep. My understanding is in Lakeville, they ended up ripping up the blacktop and redoing it. Well, it's not usual. Same company, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, Do we need to meet again to go over that letter? I don't think so. Um, I think if we pass it to each other, I think that it can be approved that way. Yes or no? I, I don't know. It could be a simple Zoom meeting. <laughs> Zoom meetings are not simple for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do not have the internet. <laughs> the way that the FOI law reads is you can do an in person meeting. And if members of the committee want to attend um, via what it was created in the days of like a regular conference calling. But if you have um, like, let's say Ed is still down in Danbury and he can't make it back to be visiting here, he can, um, we can send him a Zoom link, which is there's a Zoom link right now that's doing the recording. So oh. the members can um, attend via telephone oh. or Okay, so the, the selections meeting is Thursday. Um, I think that we should be able to get this letter put together by Tuesday and have a meeting Tuesday night, 5.30, if that works for everybody here. What day? Tuesday? I can't be here. You know? How about Monday then? I think the sooner we get the letter to the selectmen, yeah, the more the selectmen can review it before the yeah, we couldn't hear one or not there. Right, why don't you so just send the okay. letter? So okay, so if we send the letter amongst ourselves, we're fine yeah. that way. Yeah. Okay. And it, and it, we'll try and get it done and get it sent to the selectmen by Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. So that gives them all day Wednesday and all day Thursday to review it. Does that work for everybody? Sounds good. Okay. Um, Anyone else have anything to add to this meeting? <laughs> Mr. Winters. Um, 
two things. One, um, would the would the committee consider um, asking the question whether in the letter you discussed or otherwise, what changes were made in the in the change order for the curbing? What changes were made to the spec? So you talked about the height. That's the, about the that's the addendum. Okay. So, to, but but to, to ask the question about whether yeah. whether they um, eliminated the need for the for the for the thermal right. bonding. The, 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 the addendums the came before the job was bid, and the change order came after. The change order is the one that addresses all these changes in the specification. For right. the after right. the bid, yeah. And and that's and that's that if that change order was accepted, then then those changes were made to the specifications and and matters behaving. You know, they're they're following that change order because yeah. that's that's the that change order should spell it all out. It should. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And if it doesn't, then that question is why is the curve? Why are they accepting right. the curbing that's less than five? That's less than eighteen. That's that's why we're looking for the change order and the addendums and, and the contract to see who's right. responsible. And this the second one is would the would the committee consider asking for a new design detail which included a um uh, an expansion joint at the between the concrete sidewalk and the granite curb just the same just somewhat to mimic the detail that goes between the two sections of the concrete yeah, we, we've walked with kind of asked for that or we expressed our concerns and dory came back with it, it was that piece of polyethylene was all we needed so this he is, wasn't concerned about it i i i would be so, yeah. so on the plan, it's gonna, it looks going to look like crap. Yeah. You know, as that stuff starts to move, it's might be talking about the edges going to shift and that. Well, the concrete's a harder move. substance than the concrete. Mean, the granite's a harder substance than the concrete. That's right. So the concrete's going to fall at that only the joint. Okay. So, um, he, you know, what, what the plan calls is a breaker bond, and that's the plastic that they're using. It's, it doesn't allow the two to bond together, but again, it's the, in, the, the, uh, imperfections in the grant that are a concern maybe maybe you could ask for a detail that that eliminates that imperfection so that you could you know have that have that control joint the, the well, expansion joint with the piece that's that gets that's the saw cut that i was talking about earlier and even going forward though so you don't have the saw cut in the in, in, in that you can incorporate you can't that. do that with the grant we have <laughs> it's too it's too it's too it's, terrible. it's too improper yeah. Some of it is not five inches thick underneath the top of it. Because so it's not that five inches at the top. Some of it's not five inches at the top. It's like four and three foot. So from the top, some of it is concave yeah. inward toward the highway. So if you try to put any kind of extension joint, it, was, <laughs> it would create rigid. A, you'd have big voids. If you stick it out too far, and then beyond it, there'd be a big void between it and the curb. Would you be able to fill in that void with the, with the cost, wouldn't you? And then, no. the cost. No. and then it becomes a maintenance issue also. That clock does last as well. I mean, in the, every, yeah. okay. so, so many years, it's, 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 I mean, it's a good idea. Something needs to be done. Something, you know, I think the only thing at this point for what's done would be a saw cut. And maybe if they could cut it wide enough to get a piece of expansion joint and then just seal the top. I mean, you know, there might be, uh, a thinner piece of expansion joint. Uh, I'm going to look into that Monday when I take some concrete forms back to some concrete people <laughs> who sell all that kind so of they, stuff. They poured up against the stone wall at Morningside Cemetery. Yeah, the, the stone step and, and just poured against the, the stone wall. And, it's in, and, it, and there should have been an expansion joint all the way around the stone wall. Yeah, it's going to be poured be right against the other grass. I mean, this isn't the first time that, 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 that this has been encountered, right? This this issue has is probably been, been encountered before, and there's got to be a design detail. Yeah. But and they didn't they didn't put an expansion at the step going up to the Catholic Church either. So there's going to be issues there. That's part of why I asked in the beginning whether it all falls under the DOT spec, because then you could point to if it's not if the details aren't addressed in these drawings. There's certainly addressing the DOT spec that they, they should be following. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, they reference all that, all of the DOT spec for every move you make. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for. Well, thanks for showing up and being 
interested in what's happening here. <laughs> Um, anyone else have anything to add? Then um, 6.37, I'm going to call this meeting over.